here we're given a really interesting question. We are to find the interval of <coughs> increase or decrease given this expression. So the first question is, what am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to evaluate this and then find out the interval of increase or decrease? We know that when it comes to intervals of increase and decrease, it deals with the first derivative. Then whenever you have a curve that looks like this, if it's decreasing, like here, you see that the slope is negative. They're negative. And then when it starts to increase again, from that changing turning point turns to zero, and then it starts to increase again, meaning positive. So they all have to do with the first derivative. So we need to first find the first derivative, that is this expression. And we know that that is equal to dy over dx. So that brings us to the first um, fundamental theorem of calculus, part one. So here that is dy over dt, in terms of t, dt over dx. And notice it's a very single convenient one. It's just going to be one. So all we have to do is just plug in the x into wherever t is. So this tells us that it will be 1 minus x to the power of 2 e to the power of x to the power of 2. So this is our first derivative expression. And if we want to know the intervals of increase and decrease, notice that they are separated with, separated with respect to the place where the slope is equal to 0. So we need to find those places with respect to the point where the first derivative is equal to 0. It is increasing and then switches to decrease. So we need to set this equal to 0 and find where we can split these intervals. When we see this, this is an exponential function. Exponential function never can equal to 0 because if you look at their graph, exponential follows this format. If this is e to the power of x, e to the power of x squared just means it's going to increase faster and decrease faster. For every x, say 2, it's going to be then 4, so it's going to be increasing even more faster. But still, it never touches or is ever equal to 0, never ever. So here, the only place where we can set this equal to 0 comes from here. We can factor this further because something like this is called difference of squares. So this can further then equal to 1 plus x, 1 minus x with e to the power of x to the power of 2. So then x can be plus minus 0, plus minus 1. These are the places where we can separate this interval. So then we need to draw an interval chart. So here is when x is equal to negative 1, here when it's equal to 1. I like to test with some certain values, so I test with nice numbers like 0 and really obvious humongous numbers like 10. So here, obviously, this is our first derivative. This whole expression is our first derivative, so we want to check for the sign of this. What's happening? When we plug in 0, we have positive coming from the first bracket, positive coming from the second bracket, e to the power of 0 is positive 1, so this is positive, so it's increasing. When we plug in 10, we have positive from the first, and we have negative from the second, and we have positive from the third, then this is negative, therefore it's decreasing over this interval, going from 1 to infinity. From negative 1 to negative infinity, we can plug in negative 10, then we have negative here, we have 1 minus minus, that's plus, Minus 10 squared becomes positive. It's always positive. Notice that exponential, there's nothing in the bottom, so it's always positive. So this is also negative, that is decreasing. So the intervals of increase, this is what we say. F is increasing over, well, we can say negative 1 and 1, because that's where it's positive. And round bracket means exclusive, because I don't include square brackets, so inclusive. I don't include these points here, because at these points, it's 0. It's not increasing, or no, neither decreasing. So strictly to say that it's increasing, I put round brackets. And likewise, f is decreasing over two intervals, this and this. So obviously you can never capture infinity, so you must put round bracket all the way to negative 1 and 1 all the way to infinity, and you can never include infinity, so you must put round bracket. 
So this is an interesting question to sort of combine all of your understanding together as to the under, the concept of first derivative, what does it mean, depending on their sign, whether it's plus or minus. It tells us whether it's increasing or decreasing, and also testing the first, the fundamental theorem of calculus, the first part, to see if you can pick up the first derivative component from here. And then from there, setting up the interval chart to see if it's increasing or decreasing and making sure that you put them in the proper interval notation as your final concluding sentence.